What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. Welcome back. It's now episode 34. If you're new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a nice review, comment, hashtag, let's go viral, and give us a five-star rating on our podcast overall. Also, subscribe. We're trying to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of this year, and we greatly appreciate that if you guys help us achieve that goal. But, you know, today we're going to talk about Kawhi Leonard's free agency and everything. But before we hop into that, I want to give a quick shout out to our subscriber today, which is Josh Meyer. We appreciate you liking and subscribing and turning on post notification and supporting our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. But, you know, like I said, we're going to get right into it. You know, Kawhi Leonard, he's going to be a free agent this year. And, you know, obviously last year, the Clippers, they didn't look too good in the postseason. They obviously had a meltdown, blew a 3-1 series lead and everything. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, they actually speculate that Kawhi Leonard could possibly leave L.A. and go elsewhere. Now, you know. There's a few teams that have like an opportunity to land this guy, such as Golden State, um, New York, possibly Dallas, and the front runner se- seems to be the Miami Heat and everything. But you know, the Clippers. I don't feel like the Clippers ha- have like such a low shot of you know having him re-sign with them as as far as like everyone else thinks. Like yeah. in, in my opinion, if they can have like a not a historic run but you know if they can showcase to Kawhi that they're able to compete with the top contenders in the western conference and everything i think they have a legitimate shot of you know possibly re-signing him and i know that might sound crazy but you know with free agency these days you never know what can really happen yeah and it's that's not even a crazy take they added rondo they have they have serge Ibaka, who's a great rim protector who can step out and shoot the three two i mean they have paul george obviously if he would step up in the playoffs but Kawhi does his thing right now i think he's averaging like 26 six and five so shooting like 38 percent from the three-point line so he's he's really he's he's playing really well this year but his free agency is very up in the air and it's very interesting because yeah he doesn't want to get out in the second round again he wants to make it to the western conference finals and compete against lebron or maybe even make it to the finals but this roster has some disappointing areas i mean luke canard is really not showing a lot um that people expected reggie jackson i mean if you're depending on him to get a lot of points i mean off the bench i mean that's a question um losing lou will i think in my opinion it might hurt them in the playoffs because rondo is not really that score is really a pass first but if he could step up that would be huge but and i thought it was disappointing that they didn't acquire rondo before the season started and then had to give up a guy like lou williams to get him later on in the season exactly and pat patrick beverly i mean not much of an offensive threat really on the defensive end so i mean these all these pieces i'm naming can they step up in the playoffs and then Tyron Lou, how is he going to adjust when the playoff comes I mean obviously Doc Rivers really um hurt them last year we're not making any adjustments but now Tyron Lou, who l- let's see if he um makes those those right adjustments to push them along in the in the playoffs this year but nicely right. what you think but I mean I think you know this Clippers team last year you know Steve Ballmer I feel like he really dug himself a hole but it wasn't necessarily his fault and here's why you know there's a few things that just simply didn't go the Clippers way now obviously we had the four month hold on the NBA suspension and everything due to you know the virus spreading and everything and then other things factored in the fact that you know Kawhi Leonard and Paul George they only played 37 games together which leads to you know not building chemistry and ultimately working on some of your strengths and not being able to also really make any adjustments as far as to your weaknesses and things of that nature and then another thing too is the fact that i feel like you know the clippers they crowned themselves as champions before you know they accomplished anything this was an eighth seed the year before you know who pushed the golden state warriors to six games in the postseason and looked like they may have a legitimate shot of pulling off an upset which likely didn't happen but you know they still showcase that they can compete with you know teams in the western conference and with that being said steve ballmer he gives up five first round picks shea gilgis alexander and gallinari to acquire paul george and essentially Kawhi leonard now with that being said you know he now put himself in a situation to where yeah you have to sign paul george to a max contract but you won't have any draft capital for the next seven years as far as first round picks so i think there's just a number of things that just didn't go right and then obviously you know like you said the issues in the locker room i felt like lou williams and montrez harrell weren't big fans of Kawhi leonard and paul george always you know 
sitting out. Yeah, taking nights off. Yeah. And then obviously in the postseason, you know, Doc Rivers, he just didn't make any adjustments. He he could have coached a lot better, but you know those players actually did hold a lot of leads. So there's things with that. And then obviously, you know, they they were having a missing piece in the point guard position, somebody who can control the plays control the pace of the game play make and you know make sure that they can hold leads and stuff like that yeah. so i just feel like the clippers they they didn't necessarily you know blow this whole thing up on purpose it wasn't necessary it was their fault obviously but i feel like a lot of things just didn't go didn't their go way right. yeah and especially in the covid year and me and Nicey agree on this it's not like we're t- calling them terrible or trash this year they're actually if you look at the numbers they're good on the offensive end and they took a dip in the defensive end but i think with uh, Paul George and Kawhi, them being the leaders on the on the defensive side, they can get, rally that group to lead them in the playoffs. But switching over to Kawhi's free agency, we're gonna talk to we're gonna talk about the Miami Heat. And what I want to bring up about, about the Miami Heat, yes, they're the front runners, but you guys have to remember who Kawhi is. He loves to take, he loves to load manage. He did it in Toronto, and will he be able to do that at the Heat? The Heat love for you to practice all the time, be a hundred percent, give a hundred percent in right. practice and games. So I mean, will Pat Riley let that fly? And I think he actually I think they they can come to some type of common agreement because I don't think Pat Riley would be dumb enough to, you know, let a guy like Kawhi Leonard, who, who you know, could literally put you in title contention, just walk out of the door simply because he wants to load man. Exactly. And, and then switching over to the financials, they have five aspiring contracts, two guys with the team options that I don't think they're going to pick up. Besides, if they did, it would be Goran Dragic. And then and then the other people on the roster would be. Kawhi, Jimmy Butler, Bam, Tyler Hero, and then Precious Achua. So I mean, they have they have the assets to bring him in. Now they just have to build a team around him. And I think him and Jimmy actually he wanted to play with Jimmy before playing with Paul George. So I think right. they have that chemistry off the court already. So doing that on the court would be amazing. I just think that I for me I would get Kawhi. He's better than Victor Oladipo. People who think that Victor Oladipo was really going to elevate the Heat into a position stop it yeah stop it he this guy's injury prone he wants a max contract but you're not getting max contract dollars if you can't stay healthy and, and you're not dependable i'm big on dependability if you're not dependable you can't get max dollars right. so to bring in a guy like to replace victor oladipo and just restart and get back to that championship pedigree that miami has i think bringing a guy like Kawhi leonard would help and I also don't think it's necessarily stacking the deck because, you know, Miami's struggling this year. You know, we thought that, you know, obviously the slow start was due to, you know, health and safety protocols because of the virus. A lot of guys were in and out of the lineup and everything. And ultimately, you know, they also played in the NBA Finals, so they they didn't have much time to reboot and, you know, rest this offseason. So we were thinking that that was playing a big factor in as to why, you know, this Heat team was struggling. And I think it had some some part in as to why they weren't playing as well but it was mainly just because like let's just let's just call it out last year's postseason run was a fluke man i mean you go up against the indiana pacers in the first round they don't have much talent um no karis lavert back then tj warren he was elevating but you know he's not going to be the guy that's going to be able to elevate you milwaukee outside of Giannis antetokounmpo they don't they just aren't as talented you know i feel like the three-point shooting Milwaukee is a team they like to they're gonna force you to shoot them out of the game yeah they give up a lot of three-pointers and with Miami being hot at that time and you know having a sniper in Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero I thought that you know really helped them open up the floor for the rest of those guys like Jimmy Butler Bam Adebayo and so on and so on but ultimately adding Kawhi Leonard to this team easily puts you up in NBA Finals contention yeah now I see I look at you know the Eastern Conference you have the Philadelphia 76ers at the top the Milwaukee Bucks and obviously the Brooklyn Nets I think this Miami Heat team if they add Kawhi Leonard and put the pieces the correct pieces around him I think this is a team that can you know win the NBA Finals or at least win the Eastern Conference Finals at that that yep and then switching over to the next team that'd be rumored to get Kawhi services is the Warriors what do you think about that I think Golden State is a great fit. Bas- I mean, basketball-wise, it makes perfect sense. I mean, yeah. he'd be able to come into the role as a a scorer. You know, obviously, they have a ton of options on the offensive end, and Steph Curry, Klay Thompson will be back 100% healthy. And Draymond Green, he's going to be somebody who can help you defensively and be able to also play make. So I think the Golden State Warriors have a great shot at, you know, getting him. But to be honest, I don't think they'll land him just for the simple fact that I don't think that Kawhi has any – aspirations to join a, a super, super team. team yeah i don't think he's that type of player i don't think he wants that pressure on him 
I think he wants to dethrone LeBron, and I think he likes competition. I think he likes competing against the best players. I don't think he likes joining other players. So, and ultimately, I think he wants to be the face of a franchise. And exactly. Obviously, Kevin Durant will be the first one to tell you you're not going to be that guy <laughs> in Golden State. So. Yeah. And and speaking of face of the franchise, this team could possibly land the services. We're not going to rule them out. The New York Knicks. What do you think about that? I think the Knicks. It could be a great fit. Yeah. I mean, they have they have. Um, they have young talent there. You know, Julius Randle became an all-star. Uh, they also have a few veteran guards there in Derek, Derek Rose. Um, Mitchell Robinson, he's a work in progress. He could possibly be traded, but Nerlens Noel, he's shown that he can be a good big in your offense and defense, essentially. And ultimately, I think this is the one pitch that, you know, could really land Kawhi is the fact that they financially they have enough money to land Kawhi and be able to sign another superstar player such as like a Bradley Beal type of player and everything. So Exactly. Yeah, and I love their young talent. I love Emmanuel quickly. I, he's he's uh, still playing good. I like him. I like R.J. Barrett if he could like develop a jump shot. But yeah, Julius Randle's playing out his mind this year. Like I like that team, like especially if, if Kawhi can come in there, actually be a leader and uh, let them buy in on the defensive end. That would be a great fit. And then our last team that we, me and Nicely discussed is the Dallas Mavericks. What do you think about that? I think Dallas, he would definitely be a perfect match there. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, he's the missing piece, essentially. I mean, I feel like we've we, in the NBA draft last season, we were talking about that how this team needs a wing player. Yep. And Kawhi Leonard, he's obviously one of the best wings in the NBA. I think Luka Doncic, he's a great player, but as of right now, he can't do it all by himself. He needs a little bit more help. And I think Kawhi Leonard can be that huge boost for him offensively and on the defensive end. And he would also make up for, you know, Christoph Przingis' lack of, you know, availability at times and everything. Yeah, and I think if they add a little bit more pieces to that team, especially because they lost Seth Curry, and I think that was a huge hit to them. But Tim Hardaway Jr. is not bad. Jalen Brunson is not bad off the bench. But I just think that if they brought in Kawhi Leonard, they should bring in a little bit more pieces around them just to space the floor and help Luka and Kawhi. Right, and I think this is a team that's also well coached in Rick Carlisle. He's got championship experience, championship acumen, and, you know, those are some things that you look for in a championship team. Exactly. But, guys, what do you think? Where do you think Kawhi Leonard will land in free agency? Will he return to the Los Angeles Clippers, or will he go elsewhere? Let us know in the comment section. But, you know, we really appreciate you guys tuning in to another episode of our podcast. This is really fun for us, me and Greg, to do. You know, we really enjoy talking basketball with you guys and just also hearing y'all's takes and everything. So yeah. make sure you comment in the comment section. Be engaging with us. And make sure you like and subscribe and turn on post notification if you're new to our channel. But, you know, outside of that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. And we out. We out. Let's go viral. <laughs>